So in order for you to answer these questions, you need to also understand the properties of the quadrilaterals. Uh, remember, we talked about that uh, when we had uh, our questions, when we were working with the ships, just to understand what are these properties that you actually need when working with the quadrilaterals. So there, I'm not going to have a deeper explanation. It's just the basics of what you need already. You know your quadrilaterals, guys, uh, from a parallelogram. Uh, which is a quadrilateral with the two opposite sides parallel. So you're going to have uh, where the two opposite sides will be parallel. All right, considering this side and this side will be parallel, this side and this side will be parallel. And also those opposite sides will be equal in length. A rectangle is a parallelogram that has all four angles equal to 90 degrees, then a rhombus, a parallelogram with all four sides equal a square is a rectangle with all four sides being equal. Then a trapezium is a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides, but there we have to be careful. It's only one pair, one pair, like this side being parallel to this side. That's a trapezium. Then a kite. Uh, the major part that you see is a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent sides equal when you refer to the adjacent sides we are referring to the sides that are sitting next to each other this side and this side will be equal this one and this one must be equal also just remember your properties um before you attempt this uh question or, or these questions that we are given here so the questions are direct find the length of the unknown sides take note and angles in the following quadrilaterals give reasons to justify your statements also recall that the sum of angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees remember when you were working with a triangle before the sum of angles in a triangle they add up they added up to 180 degrees but any quadrilateral where we have got four angles, one, two, three, four, or four sides, the angles there is not going to be 180, but it will be 360 degrees. So a triangle, 180. A quadrilateral, 360. They are different in terms of their angles. Be careful on that. All right. So number one, which part that we can calculate? All right. A, B, we can calculate this, or we can, we can state not to calculate actually this A, B, Remember, opposite sides, they are also equal on a parallelogram. These sides are parallel. They are also equal. So if this is 7, this is also 7 centimeters. So they are not going to write down, guys, uh, but that's A, B. Uh, the reason there, opposite sides of a parallelogram, they are also equal. They are parallel and equal. So C, B, and D, A must be equal also. So this side is equal to this side. So if this is 4 centimeters this is also going to be four centimeters okay then in terms of the angles you can have the angle at b remember these are parallel lines and what is it that you know about these two angles the angle at a and the angle at b they form a c all right they form a c core interior angles and we do understand that core interior angles they add up to 180 degrees core interior angles Okay, so considering that part, we can calculate our angle B, which is going to be 180 degrees minus 80 degrees, which is 100 degrees. So this was going to be 100 degrees. Uh, core interior angles. Also, you can refer the core interior angles at C. So meaning to say angle C was going to be 180 degrees minus uh, 100 degrees which is 80 degrees. So that was going to be 80 degrees. Or you can simply take this opposite angles in a parallelogram. They are equal, opposite angles. So if this is 100, this will be 100. All right. If this is 80, this will be 80. Just like what we are seeing on this one. Let's use that concept to answer this one. As we can see that this is a parallelogram. Okay. These sides are parallel. And also these two sides are parallel. And we can consider that, like I said, opposite angles. 
will be what? Will be equal. So if this is 102, the one opposite there will be 102. So angle K is going to be 102 degrees. Opposite angles will be equal. If this is 78, this also is going to be 78. That's another property that you need to understand on a parallelogram. In terms of the sides, all right, this is actually not a parallelogram, guys, because of what? The sides. Uh, but that same property, it applies on a parallelogram as long as these uh, sides are parallel. Okay, that part is going to okay on any parallelogram. Remember, here, uh, the sides are the same, so that's a rhombus. Uh, I want you to understand this before, I con before you are confused here. A rhombus is a what? Is a parallelogram with all four sides equal. Only that. But it is a parallelogram. A rectangle is a what? Is a parallelogram. As long it is a parallelogram, as long it is a parallelogram, as long it is a parallelogram, the opposite angles will be equal. As long it is a what? A parallelogram. Whether it is a rhombus, because a rhombus is also a parallelogram, but only that it has got all sides equal. As you can see here, there is one, here there is one, here there is one, here there is one to show us that the sides, all of these sides are equal. So meaning to say, if this is six, this is going to be six centimeters. This is going to be six centimeters. This will be six centimeters. That's a rhombus. But it is a parallelogram. Only that the sides will be equal. So it maintains the properties of a rhombus. So just like the previous case, if this is 80, this is 80. If this is 100, this is 100. Opposite angles must be equal on a parallelogram. Only on a parallelogram. Okay? Then on C, we on number three, we are given a kite. A, B, C, D is a kite. Remember the properties of a kite. The adjacent sides are equal. D, C is equal to B, C. And A, D is equal to A, B. These are adjacent sides. So if this is seven, this is going to be seven centimeters adjacent side, adjacent to A, B. If B, C is four centimeters, C, D or D, C is going to be four centimeters also. These two sides are adjacent to each other. That's in terms of what? In terms of these uh, uh, sides. Also, in terms of a kite, there is another property that I need to explain here. We saw that about the adjacent sides, which is fine. This side, you have seen that this side and this side are the same. This side and this side are the same. All right. These angles, this one here and this one here, they do not have any relationship, okay? They don't have any relationship. They don't add up to 180, no. They don't add up to three, no. They do not have a relationship. But the angles that are in between, remember when you are considering those adjacent sides, there is angle formed here between this side and this side. There's an angle formed here. These two angles, they are equal, let's say, uh, I'm going to call mine A, B, C, D like this. According to this diagram of mine, I'm simply saying angle B and D will be equal. Angle B is equal to angle D. That's another property of a kite. Okay? One pair of opposite angles is equal, and this pair is this one. That is, uh, take note between the ones that are not equal, this side and this side are not equal, the angle that is in between. This side and this side are not equal, but the angle in between is the one that you consider. Do not be confused, guys. Do not take this one that is in between the equal sides. No, 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 no not that one. Not that one. These ones are not the same. This is like exactly what you have. This one and this one are not equal. But the one, the ones that I remain, this one, B and D, according to this diagram, angle B and D will be equal. All right? According to that diagram that we are having. So in this case, if angle B is equal to angle D, we have formed an equation. 
angle B and D are equal. But remember that the angles in a quadrilateral, they add up to 360 degrees. So if we remove these two angles from 360 degrees, we are going to remain with the B and D. So meaning to say that I can simply calculate, uh, calculate the angle B or the angle D by subtracting these angles that I'm seeing inside of the quadrilateral, inside of the kite, meaning to say I'm going to subtract the 55 degrees. I'm going to also subtract the 105 degrees. But everything that I'm going to get, I must divide it by two because B and D are equal. So we are going to share the remaining angle after subtracting from 360 degrees. We share it between these two angles. So that is to divide by what? By two. All right, so let's start by first finding the difference between these angles. To, so when we subtract these angles, 55, the 105 from 360, you are going to obtain uh, 200 degrees. Then you divide it by two. So that's determining the angle at B as 100 degrees if you divide this. And that is the same as the angle at D. So it also follows that the angle at D is also 100 degrees. If this is 100, this also is going to be 100 degrees. That is a property of a kite to be considered also. All right, so there we calculated uh, everything. Everything is, we filled up everything, but you're supposed to write the reasons. All these reasons that I'm explaining, you write them as it is. Number four, we are given the perimeter of RSTU is 23. What type of a shape is this one? We have got this side and this side being parallel. Only that. Never be confused with the way that they want to draw it here like this. No. RS and TU, these ones, they are not parallel. You do not force the triangles to be parallel. We now put this. No, 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 no. They must give you that condition. These two are not parallel. So meaning to say we are referring or we are talking of what? Of a trapezium. That's a trapezium where we have got one pair of parallel sides. Okay? One pair of parallel sides. So that's a trapezium. So if these two sides are parallel, therefore we can calculate the angles. Remember that we are forming a C here. So this angle of 105 and the 75 must add up to 180 degrees. These are co-interior angles. The same thing is happening at U and T. We are also forming a C like this, even though it's looking this side, but that's a C. So this angle at U and this angle at 120 is co-interior. That's the co-interior angles and co-interior angles, they add up to 180 degrees. So meaning to say we can calculate the angle at U. That is the angle U plus the 120 degrees is supposed to give us 180 degrees. All right, that's co-interior angles. We are talking of what? The co-interior angles. Because RU is parallel to ST. So there we can calculate our angle U. That's our angle U is going to be uh, 180 degrees. Take 120 to the other side is going to be a minus. So that's minus 120 degrees. That's obtaining uh, angle U, which is 60 degrees. So this was going to give us uh, 60 degrees. Or you can simply calculate the angle that is at U by using the concept that we have got all these angles except for that U. And what is it that we know about angles in a quadrilateral? Angles inside of a quadrilateral, they add up to 360 degrees. So it was going to be 360 degrees minus all these angles. You subtract the 105, you subtract the 75 degrees, you subtract the 120 degrees. You are still going to obtain the same answer of 60 degrees. You are still going to obtain the same answer of 60 degrees. That's another way uh, that you could have uh, used to answer that. All right. Remember there, we need also the sides. Okay. These sides are parallel, but they are not equal. They are just parallel. 
That is why they are giving us the perimeter of RSTU so that we can calculate these remaining sides. As we can see, we are given three sides, the four centimeters, the seven centimeters, the three centimeters. And we do know that the perimeter is the distance right round the shape. If I add the four, the seven centimeters, this three centimeters together with ST. If I add everything to ST, we are supposed to obtain the perimeter of 23 that we are given. So it was gonna be an equation where we can add, uh, this was gonna be 14. If we add, that's 11 plus three, which is 14 plus ST, which is equal to 23. As you can see, it's an equation where we need to solve for ST. In this case, this one. ST. So how can you solve for ST? Just like the previous case, we are going to transpose the 14 to the other side so that it can be subtracted there. It was a positive, so therefore ST is going to be 23 minus 14, which is the difference there of 9. So that is 9 centimeters, which is 9 in that case. This ST is representing length. That is the length of a line. So you write it in the units that we are given. These are centimeters. So your answer is supposed to be in centimeters. So being given the perimeter, it is not just you are given that perimeter. No, it is very, very important. The perimeter played a role in calculating this other side because we do understand that perimeter is the distance that is right around the shape that you are given. So let's do revise as much questions as we can so that we prepare ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time.